Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part six of MIG Welding Basics. Okay, part five was padding beads. That means just running beads right next to each other on a plate. We're going to put together a T-joint today, but after we weld it, we're going to start stacking beads on that. And what that does is it kind of trains your eyes, it trains your muscle memory, you get used to holding the gun, you, get, you train your eyes to watch the edges of other beads that are next to your bead so that you can hopefully make a straight line. That's a skill all in itself, is just to go along with, with some kind of reference point, maybe, maybe right next to you, and, and stack a bead on top of another bead without overlapping too much or not overlapping enough. So one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I had to do it one time and it really helped me a lot. I went to take a pipe welding test. It was a MIG, a stainless steel MIG, the stainless steel pipe, 10 inch, open root, downhill root, uphill, fill and cap. Now you would think that's a whole different skill set than doing T-joints, horizontal and overhead. But the first thing they had me do in the test shop was set up a T-joint and run multiple beads, multiple beads, and then do the same thing overhead, and then do the pipe. And it actually helped a whole lot. I don't really know why, as far as just getting used to holding the gun, getting the machine set just right, messing around with that, training my eyes to watch the edges and the leading edge of the puddle. All I know is it helped. So that's what we're going to do today. And, and, to, and later on, we'll, we'll put a T-joint up vertical and do the same thing uphill. And then we'll put one up overhead, and we'll do the same thing overhead, and then we'll tackle the outside corner joints, butt joints, and, and lap joints, and things like that in different positions. So let's, let's do this. Okay, this is quarter inch, cold rolled steel, cold rolled flat bar. If it was hot rolled, I might go so far as to take a sanden disc to it and knock some of the mill scale off, but it doesn't really have any of that problem on there, just a little spot of rust here and there. And since it's just practice, I'm not worried about it. So tacking them two joints up back to back. Don't know how many runs it'll take me to film this, so I want to get prepared for that. I always take a few dry runs, figure out how I'm going to position my hands. And this, I'm using 035 wire, 330 inches a minute, 20 and a half volts. Okay, before we get into it, here's a few tips. Just a few reminders. Keep your stick out short. And what I mean by short is uh, about half inch or shorter. Stick out as a distance from the contact tip to the arc. All right, don't weld cold just for appearance. You got to set this thing hot enough to penetrate. Doesn't matter what it looks like if it's not penetrated. Don't use too much gun angle. I'm using a little bit more than what's needed here just for the sake of filming it. But don't use too excessive gun angle. And keep your arc on the leading edge of the puddle. It means use a technique that keeps your arc on the leading edge of the puddle because not all techniques do. So let's talk about that a little bit further here. See, I'm just using a almost just a straight on drag here but I'm keeping the arc up toward the front the leading edge of the puddle that's where the fusion and penetration takes place you don't want to lean you don't want to lay back in the puddle and let that puddle roll ahead that's where you get cold lap and lack of fusion alright so that's the first speed done there now there are techniques that that don't keep the arc all the way on the leading edge like this it keeps it on the leading edge of the toes doesn't do anything to, to uh, drive it down into the root of the joint and then you get lack of fusion also called LOF or you know cold lap lack of penetration in the root this is a cross section of that very weld whereas keeping it even just running a straight drag here but keeping it up in the front like that results in something more like this much better okay here's another technique that I use a lot that traces the front of the puddle I've go I use this a lot it makes nice little ripples and it works really well okay here's for the second bead now we're gonna we're gonna overlap that first bead by about two-thirds not halfway about two-thirds you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute it's hard to see the exact toe of the weld of the first bead but I'll try to show it to you in just a second here you can see a little bit more clearly that's where the toe of the first weld is. So it's overlapped by a good two-thirds. If you only overlap it halfway, you wind up having big low, low valleys and everything, and you just won't be able to make a nice fillet weld. That's the edge of the weld again. So what we're going to do now for the second bead, or the, actually the third bead, but the second bead overlaying the, the, first, the root pass, just pretty much going to center up on that trough there, just where that arc and the puddle just kind of centers up on the little groove that I made by welding the first bead and the second bead generally goes a little slower than the first there's a little bit more to fill in there and you also want to keep an eye on that top toe of the weld make sure you don't leave any undercut 
at the same time you're trying to overlap that bottom bead by about half okay now you can see it was red hot there so now would be time to let it cool off maybe dunk it in a quench bucket something like that now this is just the same from here on out so I'm going to speed it up for the sake of making a little quicker video we will have three beads over top of that one trying to do the same thing as we did before just kind of align and, and watch the lines that are around us for reference points same settings on the machine and then the same thing going forward just keep on stacking beads on there this is four beads over the three not doing anything different than I did welding two over the one and that's about it and that is some excellent practice again we'll put this thing up vertical in, in a future video and also overhead it was a pretty short video so you can just watch it again if you missed anything it's it's short but it's packed full of quite a bit of information I hope it helps somebody going to school trying to figure out how to do a 2f you know uh, T joint like this multi pass alright so hit that like button if you like what you see here subscribe for more visit the store at weldmonger.com we'll see you next week